Welcome to Flutter Teacher. In this video, we will learn for, for in and for each loop. So without wasting time, let's get started. For loop is the most famous and most widely used loop in any of the programming language. So this is what the syntax of for loop is. So we have to specify for keyword, then we have to go for initialization that is from what point you want to start your for loop. Then we have to specify condition that is at what point you want to stop your loop and we need to specify the increment or decrement that is by what value you want to increment your variable or by what value you want to decrement the value of your variable. Then within the pair of curly brackets, we need to specify the body of loop that is a statement that you want to place inside the loop so that it should get executed again and again repeatedly. The opening and closing curly brackets are purely optional if we have only one statement in the loop. However, that documentation doesn't recommend it. It recommends to place the pair of brackets even if we have a single statement. So for those who are absolute beginners and they don't know how actually for loop works, I have six fantastic steps so that it will help you guys to understand for loop in excellent way. So as a step number one, initialization will be done and make sure this will be done only once throughout the life cycle of this for loop. After performing initialization, the step number two, it will go for checking the condition. Now, if your condition is true, that is the step number three, it will directly execute the body of loop. And after executing body of loop, make sure it will never go at the downside. Instead, it will go at up for increment and decrement by creating the step number four. Then after performing increment and decrement, it will go for again checking the condition. And that's what I say it's a step number five. And once again, if this condition is true, it will go for executing body of loop. And when after executing body of loop, it will again go for increment and decrement. After increment decrement, again, it will go for checking the condition. If it is true, again, it will execute the body of loop. So I can say this step number three, four, five, three, four, five goes on continuing as long as your condition is true. But when condition becomes false, so I can say this is step number six and when this condition becomes false, control will jump out of the loop body. This is a simple example program that prints the value from 1 to 5 on the screen using the for loop. For this, I have created a variable i and I have written a for loop here using a for keyword. You can see I have initialization with i is equals to 1 because I just want to start my iteration from the 1. Then I have a condition i less than equals to 5 so that my loop should stop at the value 5. And as I want the values 1, 2, 3 on the screen. So I'm incrementing the value of i by 1. Then inside the body of loop, I'm simply printing the value of i. So when I run this, you can see I will get the output 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the screen. Foreign loop is mostly used to iterate over the collections or in the iterable object. So syntax of foreign loop looks like this. We have to specify for keyword. Then within bracket, we have to specify the variable and we, have, we need to write a keyword called in here and then we specify the expression. So expression must be in the form of collection object or it must be in the form of iterable object. Then within the pair of curly brackets, we have to specify the body of loop. That is the statement that you want to run as the part of loop body. Look at this example. Here I have a list of items with total three values and I can use foreign loop to iterate or to print the values of this list item. For this, I have written a foreign loop using for keyword and here I have created a variable using int item and I have specified in, in keyword here and this is what the name of my collection that is the item. So what it will do, it will iterate for each and every element in the item. So practically what will happen, the first element that is 10, it will be stored inside this item. So value of item will be 10 at the first time. So when I'm printing the value of item, it will print the actual value of first item that is 10 on the screen. So second time when this loop will execute, that is when it goes up, then in this case, the value of item will actually be the value of second item in the item that is in the list of items. So it will print the value of item that is 20 on the screen. When third time this loop will iterate, it will receive the value of third item that is 30 in this item from the list of items. And when I'm printing the value of item, I will get the output 30 on the screen. Let's look at the practical of foreign loop. Here I have a list of items with the five values. Then in order to print or iterate the item values, I have a foreign loop written with the item as an individual variable and it will receive the individual item from this items collection. 
So as I'm printing the value of item, it will actually print the value of individual item from this list of items. So when I click on the run button, we can see I will get the output 10, 20, 30, 40 on the screen. For each loop is actually used to iterate in the collection like list, set or map. So wherever we have a collection, we can iterate the values of collection using this loop. Look at the syntax of this for each loop. We must have a collection with us. Then we have to specify dot for each and inside the bracket, we must define a function that should return a void. That is, it should not have any return type. Then this function must accept individual value of your collection as a parameter. And we can specify the body of loop that will execute the statement that you want to run again and again inside the loop body. And make sure that you should write this closing bracket of this function and place the semicolon after the function call. We can say inside this for each loop, the function that you specify, this function will receive the individual value of collection every time. And this function will execute for each and every element of collection individually. In order to understand the for each loop in better way, I have a list of names here with three names. And you can see I have written these names. So these names is basically a name of collection that I have. Then I have written a dot, then for each. And inside this, I have specified a function here. If you don't know what is function and all these things, don't worry, very soon I'm going to launch my videos regarding the functions. So here I have defined a function that accepts individual name as a parameter and inside body of loop simply I'm printing the value of name. So in this loop, the value of first item that is the value of first name Sam will be received inside this name. So as a result, when I'm printing the name Sam will be printed on the screen. Second time, the value of next element that is the value of second element mark will be received inside this name that's the reason when i'm printing the value of name it will print the mark on the screen third time when this loop will iterate it will get the value of third atom that is jack inside a name and when i'm printing the value of name i will get jack on the screen let's look at this example program in this case i have a list of names with four different names here and simply I want to print individual name on the screen using the for each loop. For that I have specified names dot for each and here I have a function as a parameter inside this for each loop. So this name is the variable that will hold the individual value inside the collection and this function will iterate for each and every element of the collection that is for the names of list individually. When I run this program you can see it will print each and every element that is Sam, Mark, Dennis and Jack on the screen. That's it for this video. See you again in the next video. If you really like the way I'm explaining the concept, then don't forget to like, share, subscribe my channel and hit the bell notification button to get my latest videos.